I have several. Ooh. Let's see. Happy. Happy unbirthday or happy birthday, everyone. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm a data manager for the Antarctic Biodiversity Portal. We are also the Antarctic node for GBIF and OBIS. Thank you for being here, and I'm excited to share with you that our vision to go towards a distribution system for essential variables for the Southern Ocean. Hmm. Next, please. Oh, interesting. So, as you all already seen, MISO, that's the Marine Ecosystem Assessment for the Southern Ocean that was beautifully presented by Jess, our keynote speaker yesterday. It's a huge effort that takes five years with more than 200 researchers the assessment, many marine assessments primarily rely on the review of published peer review literature. And the drawback is it takes a lot of time and effort. If a new assessment is needed in five years, which means we have to start now. This means we need data that's up to date and easier to manage as outlined in these two papers. Next, please. So how do we build this? Next, please. So looking at the change of biodiversity and ecosystem, ideally we should use metrics that should not be overly specific. Ideally, these changes should be in various parts of the world, because species can migrate from one place to another. And ideally, this measure should be applicable to a different area. Results comparable, so that the results are comparable, whether we are talking to IBAS, CBD, or Antarctic treaties. The framework for this are essential variables. So there are three major essential variables around the climate, the ocean, and the biodiversity variables. Next, please. So here we propose a system that revolves around these essential variables, where we engage with different stakeholders in different steps. The system should be in circular feedback, should be closely connected, and should not be static. It's also desirable to be transparent and traceable. For example, if there is a monitoring program by the policymakers, the data should be shared according to international standards, such as the Darwin Core, in a fair manner, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, so that the users can use this data to perform modeling and analysis, which in turn generate knowledge and products which feed back into the policymakers. This, ideally, this approach should be modular. Um, next, please. So what could it look like? Next, please. <laughs> so in this approach, um, as you can see at the top, we have the taxonomic information, such as including the trade data. In the middle, we have observations data, such as um, GBIF and OBIS are there. Um, and there, if there's data that could not fit well into international standards, such as Darwin Core, that can be shared in a frictionless data format in Xanado. And we also envision that her code should also be made in a fair manner, um, hopefully to share in GitHub. The observational products can be fed into EMATMAT as we partner with SUS, the Southern Ocean Observing System, um, as well as the, the other um, entity shown there. So we hope that this approach will be modeler and in order for this to 
network, a persistent identifier, persistent unique identifier, as well as web services is important. Next, please. So I'll be there yet. <laughs> Next, please. So within MISO, uh, we did an analysis on the analysis. <laughs> we did an analysis of available data within the MISO region. <clears throat> It's involved a, a number of very conservative cleaning steps. We start from about 11 to 12 million records in both in GPF and Obis. Um, and after a lot of cleaning and identifying the potential duplicates and true duplicates, we le we're left with, I couldn't see well, so a number of unique records. Um, so it was, um, yes, the conservative cleaning was needed because we needed an automated workflow. Um, next, please. And looking at the remaining data, there's a strong observational bias as many of the green, um, points, those are a very dense observational record due to the ship track um, departing from the port to the station, as well as Antarctic Peninsula, which is very, uh, which is much more accessible. Next, please. There's also a bias in temporal distribution. Um, at the top, you see many of uh, the highlighted um, bars are increase of records due to um, important projects such as the discovery project and uh, biomass and the census of marine Antarctic marine lives. At the bottom, you see there is a seasonal bias where the human observation is less during the winter. But the machine observations um, do not have this, as they are mostly the tracking data. Next, please. So one of the top products is the number of human observations per kilometer square per decade. Um, this was partially mentioned already by Jess yesterday. Uh, we are hoping that using this, we can see some trends uh, as shown at the right side of the slide. Um, next, please. So in August, we already started a project where we organize a workshop. Um, so these are the workshop outcomes. Um, first, the essential variables is very useful to assess conditions of Southern Ocean ecosystem to handle the complexity of webs, the different ecosystems and the regions of our size and remoteness, new ways of observing and more and more regular in city observations would be necessary. Where possible, existing essential variables should be used to maximize interoperability with existing global system. Uh, thirdly, the FAIR principles is very important in the, the public sharing of data um, because that would make the monitoring status of the Southern Ocean more efficient and bringing back to my first slides. This, um, as the marine ecosystem was based on review of literature data, having fair data um, would make this more efficient. And finally, we believe the sea ice is a key variable for the Southern Ocean and should be included in the global efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Ming. That was um, an excellent summary. Um, and I was in the workshop, the the essential ocean variable workshop um, for the for the Southern Ocean. Um, I'm glad to see sea ice um, mm. 
focus there. I was wondering um, whether there's going to be a forum for people in this community to engage um, with their expertise in the ongoing efforts. There's a very good question. I'll bring that up back to Anton as I don't have the answer. Thank you for your interest. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Meng. That was excellent. Um, I'm curious if uh, I know you said Miso is you know a very large project with a lot of people, and um, and I know a lot of folks have been involved with the EOVs, but do you feel that generally speaking, the Southern Ocean community of scientists is is on board this idea of this modular you know sort of data flow, or is there still a lot of effort being put into getting people you know kind of rowing in the right in the same direction? Hmm, that's a really good question, Steve. I think I think it's it's a mission. We have a lot of difficulties. For example, the lack of persistent identifier for occurrence records. For example, um, it's I think that's that's one of the hurdles that we hope to mitigate in the future. I don't know how. Uh, maybe we could look into digital extended specimen or disco. Uh, I don't have the answer, but thank you for the interest. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we will go ahead and move.